guys, welcome to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel and welcome to Motivation Monday. In this video, we're going to talk about tips on how to alleviate the new graduate nurse anxiety. One thing that I always tell new nurses is that you have to think about it like this. Ever since the beginning of nursing time, more and more responsibility has been added to nurses in general, but not more time has been added to the nursing curriculum. So at this point, it is impossible for an educational institution or a certain facility to teach you everything that you need to know in two years or four years, however long it took you to become a nurse. So what I always tell new nurses is you want to kind of walk into the job with this mindset that it's okay that you don't know everything because it's impossible that you do. Now, I know that there are certain people, maybe other nurses or the manager or whoever, who may try to make you feel insignificant or insecure about not knowing a particular something. But let me just tell you, I've been a nurse for eight years and I don't know a lot of things. And there's something that I'm learning every single day. Nursing is constantly changing. So anytime that I find people that are trying to make me feel bad for not knowing something, I know that that's not my problem really. That That's their fault that they're trying to make people feel belittled because of not knowing a certain thing. So I never really take that personally. Letting go of this anxiety though will help you sort of approach the job in a different way. You'll be able to be open to learning things because you're actually in a learning mode as opposed to a regurgitation mode. You will also be able to be grateful for the times that your school or institution did teach you things because it can make it a little bit of a shortcut for you on the job. So that's tip number one is to let go and and be okay with all the things you don't know because there's just a lot that you don't know. One thing that I do say quite a bit, I'm not sure if you've heard it from my other videos, is that nursing school teaches you a few things. And that is one, how not to kill somebody. And number two, how not to seriously harm somebody. And that's it. <laughs> So beyond that, you know, the way that the NCLEX is set up, you can think about that one patient for however long it takes until you answer the question. As we know, that's not reality. In reality, you have this patient falling out of the bed, that patient calling for pain medication, this patient crashing that really needs your attention. And that's just life. And we have to manage all of these things simultaneously as best as we can. So tip number two, and this is to help decrease your anxiety as a new graduate nurse, is to go in with the mindset of, I'm here to help. And it might sound confusing because you're not a nurse and how can you help? But there are a lot of things that you do know how to do. Believe it or not, these are little things that can make the job of a nurse very challenging. For example, you do know how to bring somebody ice and water and cups and straws and all that other good stuff. Number one. Number two, you probably know how to help somebody to the bathroom or to hand them their call bell or to shut their door. So when it comes to little things like this, you actually do know a lot. And you know, obviously never do something that you don't know how to do, but also realize that you don't need a license to take somebody water. <laughs> Now the reason why I'm going through all of this is because if you go in to work with the mindset that you're there to help, it'll help you develop relationships and it'll help you become recognized as a team player. Because not only can you be there to help for your preceptor, you can also be there to help with other nurses as well. So one thing that I did really early on because I realized that I needed to learn a lot and that one preceptor just wasn't going to cut it was I spoke to every single nurse there and I said, listen, I'm here for you. If you need any help, give me a call in exchange if you have anything cool going on, let me know because I really need to learn everything that I possibly can while I'm in my preceptorship. Now, the key is that when somebody does call you and ask you for something, be as eager and energetic and happy about helping them as possible because you want to make sure that they fully understand that you are there for them and you're there for the unit and you're there for all the patients on the unit. And trust me, if you do this, you will see more than 
so much more than other new graduates that didn't do this. And you'll learn so much and you'll feel good about learning because you're not just taking, you're also giving. The other tip that I have to help alleviate new graduate anxiety is whenever you're learning something, try to think in systems. So I knew that I needed to do a full head to toe assessment. And initially I was having a hard time remembering everything I had to do because you know, you don't just go in there and do your assessment. You're actually assessing a human being with um, emotions and feelings and all different kind of things going on. So we have to be, you know, sensitive to that. So I found it hard and I kept getting distracted because I would go in and start talking to my patient. One thing would lead to another. And before I know it, I forgot where I was or I forgot what I was supposed to do or I was really engaged in a wonderful conversation and I felt really scattered. You know, I would start off checking the pedal pulses and then I would move to checking the lungs and then I would check the abdomen and then I would move to the feet and it was just really disorganized. So I realized, I was like, you know what? System, 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 system. Let's start head to toe. And so what I did was I did the neuro exam first, part of the head. Obviously, you know, when you're talking to somebody, when you're looking at somebody, you're actually assessing them. Then I would move to the lungs. As I was at the lungs, I would go to the heart. Then when I was at the heart, I would go to the stomach. While I'm on their stomach, I would ask them when their last bowel movement was. I would also palpate it and also auscultate. Then I would move down. I would check their legs, check their skin at the same time on the legs, and then I would check the heels. Once I checked the heels, I would ask if I could check their bottom and voila, you're all set. And that's your head to toe assessment. So that's how I systemically started doing my head to toe assessment. Another thing that I systemically started to do was I would pull the medication for my patient. And at that point, I would pretty much pull all the medications. I don't know, I go back and forth sometimes. Sometimes I don't pull them all, I check first and sometimes I do. But what I usually do, and this is what I've been doing lately, is I grab all the medications, go into my patient's room, talk to my patient, if possible, for a little while, talk about their plan for the day, make sure that I'm on the same page. At that same time, I'm going to check their labs and their last set of vital signs. If I don't have a last set of vital signs, I will get a set of vital signs at that point. And then I will go through the medications one by one and make sure they're appropriate for the situation, for the patient's labs, and for the patient. And then, right then and there, I would give them medications. While I'm giving the medications is usually when I do the assessment. So I'm pretty much doing everything at the same time. And I'm staying in that patient's room until it's all done, <laughs> hopefully. I do really whatever it takes to try to stay in the room until I finish everything. And then right then and there, I document the assessment, write a quick note, move on to the next patient. So that's how I made a system out of how I'm going to approach each patient in the morning because I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything as much as possible. If it helps you to have a list, I use sticky notes all the time, like they're going out of style. <laughs> I'm a huge sticky note person because sticky notes help me stay on target and stay focused on what I need to do, what I have left to do, and what needs to be done. So sticky note everything up. You can write all those steps down and you know, that's it. Just find ways to do things. Another thing that's sort of, I, th I call it a system, is whenever I go to a room, whenever, I always ask myself, what else can I do? <laughs> now, the hourly rounding kind of does sum that up in a, in, in a sense because we're asking the four P's, pain, potty, position, Pain, potty, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, anyways, what's the other P? Oh my gosh, okay, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> the rounding does actually help with that because essentially it covers a lot of those questions right then and there. But I always ask myself, what else can be done right here, right now? And that's for a few things. One, to take care of the patient, of course. The other thing is to make sure that when I do leave the room, they're not calling again in five minutes because they need ice or because they need their light turned off or something like that. So I always ask the patient, I'm here right now, is there anything else that you need? And then I also do my own surveying of the room. Do they have ice, water, you know, everything like that. So that's another thing that I do is, you know, that's sort of like a system thing that I do. So when you're new, you're not gonna know all the systems that you need. 
and you're going to need to build a lot of them on your own. But be in the mindset that you want to make systems of things because it'll make your life a little bit easier because remembering scattered details is a little bit harder. So guys, welcome to nursing. I really hope that this video helped you out a lot, whether you are a brand new nurse or you've been a seasoned nurse just like me. So I really hope that you like this video. Next week, I'm going to talk about how to change your diet so that you can have more energy and vitality. So I cannot wait to see you then on the next Motivation Monday. I love you guys so much. Bye. Let's stay connected, guys. No matter where you are in the world, join me here every Monday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time for the weekly nursing pre-huddle before your regular huddle. This will help you start your week off on the right note. Also, get email notifications as soon as the videos are published. By joining my email list, you will receive 25% discount on my best-selling books. The first book, How to Succeed in Nursing School, has been called the best nursing school preparation guide for thousands of students just like you. Many say it's a must-read before entering nursing school. In this book, I share how I went from a very average student to graduating nursing school with honors. It also includes tips on how to choose your nursing school, how to be successful in nursing school, and how to stay motivated and driven while in nursing school. The second book, New Nurse, How to Get, Keep, and Love Your Nursing Job, is an outstanding book to help nurses start their careers on the right foot or rekindle their love for nursing. We all join this profession for altruistic reasons, but sometimes the stress of the job has us beaten down. This book, I promise, will help you reignite your love for the amazing work you do. And finally, by joining, you will also have access to a 40% discount for my How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology program. In this program, I share how I went from a C average student to two semesters later was on the dean's list. I've shared these tips with thousands of other students and they have phenomenal results. Click here for information on how to join my email list. And oh yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel also. I'll see you guys next week. Love you. Bye.